Now, by leaving the state, those 57 Texas Democrats have effectively made it impossible for Republicans there to vote on that state election bill. And those Democrats now in D.C. are meeting not just with Senator Joe Manchin, but several key senators on federal legislation. The thing is, though, they can't stay out of Texas forever. So let's get more on their plan from one of those Texas Democrats, Representative Trey Martinez Fisher. Representative, thank you so much for being on with us today. I know it's a busy day. Uh, Governor Abbott is vowing to hold special sessions after special session after special session until this bill is passed. So what's the end game here for you? Are you moving to Washington for a while? Well, you know what? I'm here now, and that's what matters, and we are determined to stay here all the way through the end of this current special session, which is really the only thing we should be talking about right now. Uh, you know, special session after special session, that is certainly the governor's right uh, but we have a job to do right now, and that is to rally this nation. Uh, everybody's looking at us here in Texas. They know what's happening with this voter suppression and our suppression session. And we need to rally this country, and we need to, to, to make so much noise that the United States Senate begins to hear us, and they begin to act by passing the For the People Act, by taking affirmative steps before the August recess to send a signal to the country that we are not going to lose democracy in this country. This is a now or never moment. Everybody is singing from the same hymnal, from the president to the speaker of the United States House. All eyes are on the Senate, and it's a now or never moment. So, Representative, we all know what's holding up any federal legislation around this and the math in the Senate, for one thing, the razor thin majority and the filibuster rule. So were you disappointed that President Biden didn't directly say the word filibuster when he made that big speech in Philly yesterday? No, I'm not. You know, first I'd say you know, we are honored to stand with President Biden and Vice President Harris on voting rights. They have made their, their they've made their commitment known. They're not hiding from it. They are doubling down. Uh, I, I've been in the legislature 20 years, and I respect the process, and I also respect you know our right to to do our work. And so I think the president understands that it's the Senate's job to find its way. It's Leader Schumer's job to, to wrangle his votes. And we all know that when Mitch McConnell wanted to pack the Supreme Court, he changed the rules. Uh, we know that when it comes to spending money, we can change the rules. I think when it comes to people's constitutional rights to vote, we can also change the, move, the rules. We can also change the rules if Republicans will not meet us halfway. And I think that's where we are at this moment. And I think we need to continue to keep the pressure on and keep the momentum building in our direction. And today, the White House press secretary wouldn't hint at whether the president would support the idea of an exemption or a carve out to filibuster rules specifically for election issues, as the Texas Democrats are proposing. Did this come up in your meeting with the vice president at all? It, it did in a way. Uh, but, you know, we, we could quickly acknowledge that uh, Majority Whip Clyburn has been talking about a proposal, has an idea about carving out uh, the filibuster for voting rights. And we think it's a phenomenal idea. And I think really, again, respecting and deferring to the legislative leaders who make the resolutions and the laws is to, to see what that process is. Uh, it seems to be picking up a lot of support. I saw in the business community with the Americans for Sustainable, the, the American Sustainable Business Council has said that they like this idea. I think it makes sense. I believe that no tradition or no Senate rule should come before our constitutional rights, especially our right to vote. Finally, Republicans point to other legislative business that's being put on hold in your absence right now. Things like changes to child protective services, teacher salaries, et cetera. Are you prioritizing this voting issue right uh, over everything else? And do you think that's a good idea and why? Well, I will tell you, Republicans are in control of everything and they have the votes. So if they wanted to celebrate Christmas in the month of April, they could do it. We had 140 days to get the people's business done. They kicked the can down the road. And then they came up with this suppression session, attack on voting rights, attack on women's health, attack on LGBT. Uh, and, and every wedge issue you would think that, that they would love to talk about in Republican primaries. And we're not going to put up with that. Uh, and so they want to have real talk about real solutions. They know how to get a hold of us. But if they just want to have some sort of dog whistle political session to rally their base, that's not our job to accommodate that. We want to represent the voices of our voters, and we want to stand for democracy and voting rights. All right. Democratic Texas Representative Trey Martinez-Fisher, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, let's take a look at another perspective. I want to bring in now Texas State Representative Travis Clardy, a Republican who serves on the Texas House Elections Committee. Representative, I want to play for you something that the vice president had to say today after her meeting with your Democratic colleagues. They took bold, courageous action um, in line with the legacy of everyone from Frederick Douglass, who's over my right shoulder when he fought for the right of black men to vote in America, to the legacy that includes all those women who marched down Pennsylvania Avenue for women's right to vote, to all of those folks who shed their blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge to make sure that we would, in 1965, pass the Voting Rights Act. So, Representative Clardy, uh, the vice president taking some heat for that today. Critics saying, how could you even compare what happened during the civil rights movement of the 60s and the violence in the billy clubs when you've got uh, <laughs> Democrats coming in on private planes with cocktail service? So how would you characterize uh, your Democratic colleagues and, and what they're doing and how they're doing it? Well, I tell you what, right now, I think they put the word hyper and hyper hyperbole. Uh, I saw President uh, Biden, one of the segments you just ran earlier, saying that this is worse than anything in, in the democracy since the Civil War. Uh, you know, I think we had a couple of world wars in there, a Spanish flu, a coronavirus, a Great Depression. Uh, that said, this is a very serious issue. We are approaching it seriously. Uh, we, we weren't able to get the election bill moved through uh, at the end of the session. There were some problems there. And the things were complained about in the interim, I, I said uh, at that time that Look, there, there are problems. We're going to get them fixed. The proof will be in the pudding. Well, now the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we've addressed those issues. It's a good, solid bill. We're ready to go forward, but it's hard to do anything. You can see behind me an empty uh, House chamber in the Texas legislature. Um, we, The Republicans showed up. We're ready to work. Work on a lot of things that are important. Uh, you know, Things like a 13th check for our retired teachers. Things like taking care of our foster children. They're really having a hard time because of the disruption of the from the uh, kind of a hangover from the pandemic. So, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't buy a lot of the histrionics and the really hysteria that this mythologized uh, uh, take and a really misperception of what the legislation that we're trying to move in Texas and certainly the House Bill 3, which we heard in the special. Uh, it's just the, the, the rhetoric does not match the reality. And so I would challenge anyone to actually take some time and read the bill and see what it does. It's very well reasoned. It's thoughtful. Uh, I think we, you know, and, and it's in the process. That's the other thing. The, the, the Democrats left on, the, I guess, fourth day. Uh, there were opportunities to, to amend this on the floor to have further debate and deliberations. Uh, you know, it, it's important to me that that you know, we had our uh, elections administrators, county clerks association normally who stay neutral on, on legislation step in and uh, are supportive of the bill because it does what they want it to do, which is empower people's right to vote. We want everybody that's eligible and registered in Texas to be able to vote. And, and that we had a great election. This is not a, you know, this isn't about the November uh, presidential election. This is about making sure future elections are reliable and that there's confidence of Texans in Texas elections. And Representative Clardy, Governor Abbott is now threatening to detain those Democrats as soon as they return to the state. Texas House Republicans also approved an arrest warrant to bring House Democrats who fled the state back to the state house for this special session. What do you think about going that route? Do you want to see your Democratic colleagues arrested when they return to Texas? Uh, honestly, personally, no. I mean, I was happy to see uh, Trey on the television. I, I miss him. If you, Trey, you're watching, uh, come home. We need you back in Texas and bring your bring our, our Democratic colleagues with you. Uh, no, but I do think it was important, and I supported that. I voted for that measure. That's part of our rules. That's part of our procedures that we all voted on unanimously. Uh, there's historical precedent for this. But do I hope we get there? No, no. I, I hope that cooler heads prevail and that after they've enjoyed some time in D.C., had a nice plane ride and had some nice meals and do some, you know, tourist things. You know, it is summertime. Everybody needs a little bit of a vacation uh, that they'll they'll uh, regroup. And, and uh, like, you know, all good Texans, they'll come back to Texas where they belong and come back here behind me. And we'll we'll get back to work. So, no, I, 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 I don't think they need to uh, have that done. That said, I expect that if we don't come back to this special session, Governor Abbott will most certainly call a special session. I will tell you, we will act on these priorities. Uh, and, and there's a lot of things that are important to the people of Texas. So uh, my hope is uh, that this can be done peacefully uh, and that they will uh, matriculate their way back to Texas and, and we'll get back to work.
Democrats. All right, as we talk about the details of this legislation, I just want to make sure we're starting from the same baseline here. You said this legislation is not a reaction to the problems in the 2020 election, right? In fact, you said that in yeah. Texas you had a strong election and Republicans won. Is that correct? That, that's right. I served on the elections committee during regular, and I'm on the, the uh, uh, select committee uh, that heard the uh, the elections bill just a few days ago. Uh, and I've said from the, from the get-go, since we first started having our hearings, that, you know, we had a good election in Texas. We had record turnout, 12 million people. That's 4 million more than the previous presidential election just four years before. Uh, record numbers of voters, record numbers of registered voters. Uh, and, and and again, our elections go off uh, very, very well. We have outstanding election professionals in Texas throughout the state. Uh, are there some rogue clerks here and there that try to take on powers they don't have? Yes, and that's why we need to tweak, tweak the rules. Uh, you're, Election laws need to be uniform and consistent. Nobody's vote should count more than anybody else's. And I can hear the lawnmowers on the North Lawn here at the Capitol outside the window. Um, the person maintaining our, our lawns, that vote should count just as much as the governor of the state of Texas and, and all points in between. It's uh, uh, And so to do that, they need to be uniform and consistent. People can have uh, built-in advantages of hours or whatever compared to other folks in the state. We've tried to reach a balance there. We've tried to balance it between, you know, different uh, uh, sizes of, of counties and what those hours can be. Uh, and again, that's why I think it's important to me, uh, having worked with those elections professionals, when they have uh, fully supported this bill. Uh, it, it's a it's a good bill. There's there's we want everybody that's eligible and is registered to be able to vote and hope they will exercise that that uh, you know vital uh, American right. Um, by the same token, if there's people determined to break the law, and we have seen troubling trends. Again, we don't have an epidemic of voter fraud. Those are not the allegations, but we do know of cases. Uh, importantly, I will tell you, you got to remember, the, we don't have it just one election every four years for president and deciding who gets the electoral votes. There are, so, there are all sorts of political subdivisions throughout the state in elections every year and in the spring for school boards and hospital boards and uh, municipal utility districts and water districts and all these things, some of which have the power of eminent domain and taxation. Uh, that's where so, we've seen a host of our problems in elections. So it's, it's bigger. So, it, yeah, go ahead, so, 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 yeah, so let me, okay, so you, a number of things, I'm taking notes here, you say it's not an epidemic, you want to make a few tweaks here and there, um, but this is a this is a pretty huge cat and mouse game for a few tweaks here and there. I mean, you agree that President Biden lawfully won the election, right? Lawyers and state election officials around the country have come up with no real and solid evidence of widespread fraud, so why not move forward? Well, and that's the point. This isn't about the November 2020 election, particularly in Texas. We trust the election results here in Texas. But what it is about are these other elections that are important and, and have real impact on real Texas lives that we have to make sure are protected. Uh, truthfully, the smaller the election, the easier it is to manipulate or influence that if someone is of a mind to do so. But we need to make sure when we find evidence, and there is a case there where someone is trying to influence wrongfully and illegally an election, that we root that out. We have to be ruthless in this. We have to have zero tolerance for voter fraud in Texas. That is not that doesn't necessarily run to uh, a presidential election. In fact, the bigger the election, I think we, we all would recognize this, the bigger the election, the harder it is to influence by somebody's individual criminal actions. Uh, but but for us, it's about having a, a, a legal system in place that's understandable, that's understood by the people that run elections. So when people come in to vote, they walk away having had a good, positive experience, feel like they've discharged their civic duty. And the best thing that we do in Texas compared to a lot of our, our sister states is after an hour of the polls closing, you know what the, the turnout was, what the vote was for early voting and the mail-in ballots. And very shortly thereafter, by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, even in our big urban areas, we know that the precincts have all reported and what the outcome of the election is. When we go to bed at night in Texas, we know the outcome of the election. Uh, and I think that's a, a very company thought. There's not these gnawing doubts that people have that, well, what happened in the wee hours when they didn't, you know, what happened between when we went to bed and what happened the next morning? What happened in the two or three days after? Um, I think that's really a hallmark of a positive election is because we do it right. Uh, and I think the Secretary of State's office, which we work with throughout this session with the election bill, does a good job of providing that support role. So. You know, this is, I really am taken aback by the, the, the overreaction and the fanfare this, this has received in, in Washington, D.C. Um, so, like I said, I think that will that will pass. 
But inevitably, we will be back here. We will be on this floor of the House behind us, and we will take up the elections bill and these other things. Uh, and I'm very positive that we will, when given the opportunity to again lay this bill out, and uh, the bill author uh, does that, and it's, it's deliberated, and there's back and forth, front mic, back mic, and, and uh, uh, serious conversations, mm -hmm. and folks can vote their conscience and vote their districts, that we will pass a very strong bill that we will be proud of in the state of Texas. And now, Representative Clardy, what you're describing are local issues, and it sounds like that's what you're saying, that there are issues that are specific to Texas that you guys want to troubleshoot and tweak to get around. But in terms of the national narrative around this, you've called that mythologizing. Now, Brennan Center cites 28 new laws in 17 states making the process to vote more difficult. So how do you explain that national push happening sure. by the Republican Party if it's not in response to the claims about the 2020 election? Yes. And so uh, what I'd have to say on that is the, the, the I'm not talking about the mythology of the federal elections. I'm a state representative. And so I'm speaking exclusively about what goes on in Texas. I really can't uh, you know, de deal with those other states. I, I have that's not my not my responsibility so but when i say about the mythology what i'm talking about is the misunderstanding and the misrepresentation of what the bill that we are hearing in texas which we can no longer hear or move forward because we don't have a quorum because the democrats went to dc instead of reporting to duty in austin so that's when i say that that's what i mean the 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 the, the misrepresentations and the, or the misperceptions that's don't that's don't make it a misrepresentation of what the bill actually does and what it says so you know that's what we that's uh, that that's what I mean by that. But around the the state, I hope all states are taking a serious look at their election laws. I think we all were the, the system was stressed through the COVID pandemic. How to deal with that? I think decisions were made, some good, some bad. Uh, but again, it is I think it's paramount for our society, for our American democracy, that all Americans. Uh, because we all are intertwined, and some states can uh, influence the outcome of presidential elections or the, or the balance in the Senate. And we all need to have confidence in our, our sister states and that all elections conduct in the United States are fair and equal and consistent and reliable. So that's that's really where I think we all need to be going. Uh, you know, and that's the, that, that is what I think hopefully our, our counterparts around the country are doing. Representative Travis Clardy, appreciate your time today. All right, thank you. Look forward to doing it again soon. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.